Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a psychological thriller film, Marionette. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Marianne is a famous psychologist. A few years back, during an outing with her loving husband, short named husband, their car stalled at a fork in the road. A kind man offered them a ride. Unfortunately, they ended up in a car accident, killing her husband. Marianne has spent her days in tears following the tragedy. To start anew, Marianne moves from upstate New York to Scotland. The trauma wounds her so much. Time and again, she wonders what would happen if she takes another path according to husband's advice. She wishes for the revival of husband, but that will never happen. Marianne soon joins a psychology clinic in Scotland. Her first client is Manny, a boy with golden curly hair. He lost both parents and stays with the foster family. Suffering from severe autism, Manny seldom talks. He spends most of his time drawing. Marianne tries to make some conversation about his drawings. That trick pays off. Manny claims that he can make disasters happen. At once Marianne does not take his words seriously. That night, when she drives through a tunnel, she witnesses a car accident that takes away several lives. To her shock, she finds one of Manny's drawings prophesying the car accident. In his sketch, a doggy pig is watching the car accident. Obviously, the fat pig refers to Marianne. Immediately after Marianne questions Manny if he draws it based on the news report. However, Manny replies that he makes the car accident happen, and without his interference, Marianne would not be there. Needless to say, Marianne does not believe his smelly bullshit. In her opinion, it is possible to foretell an upcoming disaster, but it is not possible to create one as he wishes. Undaunted, Manny tells Marianne there is a gun in her drawer. Marianne denies it, for she has never seen any gun there. Comes evening, Marianne pulls open the drawer and finds a gun. Frightened, she checks with the office manager if Manny has entered her office. Manager does not remember seeing him. Touching the gun, Marianne ponders how it emerges out of thin air. Later on another note, Marianne signs up for a book club. They often discuss profound theories such as the parallel universe theory and Schrodinger's cat. Imagine putting a cat in a sealed box with deadly radiation. If the radiation decays, the cat will die. If the radiation doesn't decay, the cat is alive. The experiment suggests that cats live or die depending on human observation. Without observation, the cat is both alive and dead in the box. Both realities exist at the same time. If you observe it, it immediately splits into two parallel worlds. The cat is either dead or alive. They believe that consciousness determines the existence, and even creates two different universes. As a child psychologist, Marianne is not interested in these discussions. But she is interested in a handsome man rich in hormones and beards, nicknamed Beardy Hormone. The two chat in perfect harmony. It is not easy for her to meet a hormone mate. Beardy Hormone invites Marianne in for a cup of coffee. But Marianne still grieves over her late husband and is not ready to see another man right now. She cannot tell if she has fallen for Beardy Hormone. Applying the theory of Schrodinger's cat, she is both willing and unwilling to explore the new relationship. After some consideration, she decides to give it a miss. However, a series of weird occurrences changes Marianne's mind. The next day after work, she receives a stranger's call. The man tells Marianne she must kill him, or else he will kill her. Before Marianne asks who she should kill, the man hangs it up. Other than that, the air ducts in her house give off strange noises. Marianne tries to investigate, but to no avail. Feeling insecure, Marianne returns to the book club and agrees to date Beardy Hormone. Their relationship has grown by leaps and bounds. Together, they spend sweet time discussing poems and sailing. At the clinic's meeting, Marianne informs her colleagues that someone has instructed her to kill a person. She wonders if anyone is playing a prank on her. The clinic director is apparently disturbed by such news, but he tells Marianne not to care about it. Marianne intuitively knows that it is not something small. So she looks for director privately and probes further. Director reveals that it should be from Manny's previous doctor, short name doctor. Two months ago, this man got delusional and tried to set himself on fire. He ended up in a mental hospital with severe burns. Director assures her that doctor's words do not make sense. Marianne has many questions unanswered. She wants to know why doctor burnt himself and who she should kill. All this must have to do with Manny. Checking doctor's diary, Marianne finds him writing that Manny's dream is real. She is now more curious about Manny's supernatural ability. During their session, Manny has been doodling creepy scenes of accidents and disasters. When asked why he favors such themes, Manny plainly says he wants them to take place. 
And then, he draws a picture of a man falling into the sea, and writes down the name of Beardy Hormone on the paper. Marianne's heart almost falls out. She checks with Manny if the man is swimming. Manny coldly replies that no, he will be drowned to death. That sends a shiver down her spine. She recalls Manny's ability to prophesy disaster and the previous car accident. If what Manny says is true, she must prevent Beardy Hormone from dying. So Marianne follows Manny to his house. Manny's foster mum introduces Manny as a kid, who has never uttered a word. Manny's father died in a car accident. Unable to grapple with the loss, Manny's mother committed suicide in the car. That is possibly why Manny is so into drawing gloomy pictures of disasters and accidents. Marianne cannot wait to clear her doubts. She asks Manny why he puts a gun in her drawer. Manny's answer is rather ambiguous. He says there is no gun in the drawer. It only appears after Marianne looks at it. The gun is similar to Schrodinger's cat. As long as Marianne observes it, the gun would exist. Marianne is not convinced at all. She bangs against the table, and questions Manny about how he knows about Beardy Hormone, and why he curses him. In terror, Manny starts screaming like he is having a seizure. While the foster mum rushes in to pacify Manny, Marianne discovers a new painting. It is about a fat pig committing suicide with a gun. Back home, Marianne wants to alert her boyfriend. However, no one picks up the call. Meanwhile, the TV news reports about a flood that kills more than 2,500 people. Marianne is reminded that Manny drew about the flood yesterday. Anxious, she stumbles to her desk and sorts out that drawing. On it, the number 25 is glaring at her. Marianne cannot help but believe that Manny has the power to mess up her life. Now, finding her boyfriend is the top priority. So Marianne visits his house, he is not in. She goes to the book club, but he is not there. She even ventures to the harbor at late night and searches the boat, but it all proves futile. Marianne leaves a voice message to her boyfriend, telling him not to sail into the sea. Seeking a proper solution, Marianne decides to meet Doctor at the mental hospital. Doctor is a man full of scars on his face. Just one glance, he knows where Marianne is coming from. Doctor reveals that Manny is able to manipulate the future and make his drawing come true. Manny is God in this world. The gun in Marianne's drawer, the noises from the air ducts, and the sudden deaths of her closed ones are all within Manny's control. He toys his target like a marionette until the target is killed. The only way to stop him is to murder him. Doctor moves upstairs upon finishing his words. Marianne is left seating in the vacant room. Her blood runs cold after hearing Doctor's message. She comes to realize that Manny preys on her, and she will die like the fat pig in his picture. Gathering her wits together, Marianne discovers that Doctor is reading the book Second Death. She recalls that Manny has a picture of the same theme. Marianne senses that Doctor must be in danger, and rushes to the rooftop. As she watches, Doctor jumps off the building, just like what is drawn by Manny. In shock, Marianne cannot even stand firm. This incident all the more confirms the fact that Manny is able to control the future. So Marianne rushes to the harbor in car, and waits for her boyfriend by their boat. She leaves a handwritten note on the boat, warning him not to go into the sea. A thought flashes across her mind. If she was to release the boat, Beardy Hormone would not be able to sail. So Marianne unties the rope. And then, she visits the archives room at the clinic for the previous medical records of Manny. Flipping through the notes, she finds another painting. It depicts a man sleeping in a boat, implying to Marianne that Beardy Hormone might be sleeping in the boat. Marianne drives back to the harbor. A group of men crowd at the seashore to discuss a tragedy. It is said that a boat without ropes was driven ashore and wrecked. One fisherman even reports that the victim's girlfriend has set the boat free last night. Marianne cannot imagine that her relief efforts accidentally kill Beardy Hormone. Right then she recalls seeing a picture of a doggy pig captured by a policeman. Beside them, a fisherman is sitting on a stone. The setting is exactly the same as her current situation. Marianne realizes that she will be arrested soon. So she immediately leaves the harbor. On her way back to the city, Marianne remembers many details about Manny. Doctor has ever noted down their conversation. On one occasion, Manny said that he is the ruler of this word. He is able to manipulate and ruin everything. The reason why he regards himself as a god and kills others through his painting is that he does not want to receive any mental treatment. He hates the world. Manny used to tell Doctor he would destroy the clinic, the hospital, the whole world, and the adults who neglect him. Up to this point in time, Marianne fully submits to Doctor's advice. She must kill Manny to restore the order in her life. Therefore, she breaks into Manny's house and snatches him from the hands of his foster mom. To Marianne, 
The most depressing curse is that she would commit suicide. She cannot see why she is chosen for the torture. Enraged, she slaps Manny and questions him if could see this coming. Confused, Manny wants to know why Marianne kidnaps him. Immediately after, Marianne points her gun at him, demanding to have her normal life back. In the meantime, she realizes a police's car is chasing them. Marianne turns the car around and takes Manny into a desolate factory. She threatens Manny to restart her life. However, Manny shakes his head, saying it is too late. He explains that from the time she makes her choice to open the drawer, her fate is set. He does not control anyone's actions. He warns Marianne not to shoot, otherwise, everything will disappear. She's like Schrodinger's cat right now, in a quantum superposition of shooting and not shooting. In the end, she pulls the trigger on impulse. Right after that, she regrets it. It is too much for her to kill two lives in a day. She does not have any hope in life. Breaking down, she picks up the gun to kill herself. So far, what has taken place matches Manny's drawing. Strangely enough, Marianne somehow knows that she is not dead. Instead, she feels like having a dreadful nightmare. When she wakes up later, she finds herself to be lying on the operating table in New York. It turns out that she was the one severely injured in the car accident with her husband. To her unbelief, her husband is still alive. Husband tells her that she has been unconscious during the past few days. Marianne holds husband's hand, feeling relieved that she is able to reset her life. Marianne dismisses all the unhappy moments about Scotland, treating them as a nightmare. Following her recovery, Marianne returns to the clinic. She plans to have two children. Husband is so happy that he wants to bring her to Scotland. However, Marianne cannot sleep whenever she thinks of Scotland. She describes all that to husband. But husband firmly tells her they have never been to Scotland before. Marianne alone ruminates on the dream and wonders if it really happens. But she even remembers Beardy Hormone's phone number. On a sleepless night, she finally dials the number. The receiver denies knowing her. But she recognizes his voice and confirms that he is Beardy Hormone, her boyfriend. All of a sudden, she seems to realize certain things and heads to Scotland for verification. According to the address in the dream, she finds the psychology clinic. She finds the manager and colleagues are exactly those who live in her dream. But they do not know her at all. What's more important, there is no client named Manny and the scarred doctor is still alive. Marianne concludes that what she has gone through was not merely a dream, but a parallel world created by her suicide. The cat could be dead or alive. The gun could exist or not exist in the drawer. When she chooses to open the drawer, one world with a gun and another world without a gun are created. When she chooses to date Beardy Hormone, one world with a new relationship and another world without the relationship are unfolded. Two parallel worlds emerge at every decision she makes. If all the previous assumption is true, she has to know how she revives after killing herself. To solve the mystery, she enters the archives room and finds Manny's medical record lying on the floor. This poses as a bug to her. If Manny has never visited the clinic, his medical record would not appear in the archive room. Piecing up all information, she deduces that she might not have escaped from the thumb of Manny. Just when she cannot figure it out, Manny walks out of the room. He arrogantly announces that he has given Marianne a chance to live her life anew, but her choice upsets him. Marianne's choice determines her destiny. In the previous world, Marianne is doomed when she opens the drawer. In the current world, Marianne cannot avoid death when she makes the call to Beardy Hormone. In fact, Beardy Hormone has fallen dead from the stairs. Husband will also die because of her. Marianne opens the medical record, but to her disappointment, it is all empty. This is because Manny is a healthy child in this particular world. She takes out everything and finds a gun and a picture. The picture shows that a man dies of a hurricane. Soon after, Marianne receives a call from her friend that husband has lost his life in a hurricane. Breaking down, Marianne screams in hysteria. She has no idea why her life is so miserable. Among thousands of men on the earth, she alone is transferred from one world to another and set to go through so many hardships. Marianne wants to shout at Manny, but he is long gone without any traces. And then Marianne trembles her way out of the clinic, armed with a gun. The policeman takes her as a psychopath and captures her. To her dismay, Manny shows up at the quarantine room and watches her suffering. Marianne cannot tell which world is real. It is also unclear when the two parallel worlds begin. The end of the movie reals that both worlds are merely an imagination of Manny. Marianne and the characters related to her do not exist in reality. The autistic child is traumatized by his parents' sudden death. To manage the fear of losing them, he creates a world dominated by himself. 
In his world, a psychologist with a similar experience like his mum accompanies him. She would discover the gun in the drawer and suffer pains resulting from her choices, while Manny would try to interfere in preventing her death. They are just imagination traces of the boy who's longing to choose the right way out of his own family's tragedy. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.